So you've learned about value and how that works in black and white. And hopefully you should have a pretty good understanding of what we're expecting from your color wheel project. But what happens to value when it's no longer in black and white? How does this apply to color? Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding about how value works in color. So here I have my 14 by 14 inch bristol board already cut out. And notice how I went ahead and drew my horizontal and vertical lines there. So I know exactly where the middle is at. And I've also gone ahead and marked down where two inches is from the top and bottom. So that's where the top of the diamonds will go. And also where three and a half inches is from the top and bottom as well. And that's where your value swatches will start. You only have to deal with two sizes for this project, and that is your one inch by one inch square that is turned into a diamond for your pure color swatches. And all your other swatches will be a half inch by one inch. Don't forget that yellow must be the top facing up. When mixing paint, don't forget that if you add white to a mixture, you cannot add black to darken it. So here I'm adding white. I'm sure what happens when you add black. So I'm gonna add a little more. Put it all together. And for sake of this demonstration, oh no, I went too light. I wanna make it go darker. Now, if you take this paint here and add black to it, what happens is that the paint gets grayed down. And now it's definitely more of a mixed color. So you can take more blue and add it in there. No matter what, it's still gonna be pretty much grayed out. So there we have our three swatches, the blue that was too light. So then the next swatch down is when we darken it with the blue. So it keeps that blue effect. And then the last one is when you add black to that mixture and notice how it has lost most of its blue and has taken on much more of a gray look. So make sure you're not using white and black within the same mixture. When doing intermediate colors, you're trying to get a visual balance of the two colors you are mixing together. Does that mean you'll have equally 50% green and 50% yellow, for example, to get that color. In this case, since green is a darker color, you're gonna need a lot more yellow just to achieve a nice, even green-yellow effect. Get even more yellow. And there we have a decent green-yellow mixture. I personally find that the intermediate colors are the most fun to mix and paint. Now for yellow paint, Remember, you're not gonna to want to use black to darken it. Let me show you what happens when you add black. Again, black has a little bit of blue in it. So when you add black to a, to a yellow mixture, it takes on this weird olive green effect. Instead, you're going to want to use purple. So with purple, you'll still keep the integrity of that yellow color while still darkening it takes on more of an orange look. So I'll paint this down for you so you can see the difference. So this is the yellow being darkened with the purple. Also keep in mind that yellow tends to be a thinner color. So it's gonna take you several layers most likely to get a nice smooth surface on the yellow. So there's your yellow being mixed with black and taking on that green look and your yellow be mixed with purple. And notice how the one be mixed with purple still has more of that yellow tone. So make sure you're mixing your yellows with purple. Now you already know how to check values when it's black and white, or at least hopefully you should know by now. But let's go ahead and start tossing some color into that mix. So here I have some swatches that I've already pre-painted, and I'm gonna to talk to you how to still use your black and white value scale to find value with color. Also for the different checks that we have to make sure you're doing your project on time, we're having you do two groups of colors at a time and we're choosing those colors for you. And that is because the colors we're having you do are easier to compare to each other. It's not enough that the color is the correct value, it must also match the value of the swatch next to it. This is because within each jump in value, there is a lighter, middle, and darker tone within that value. So you could have a blue that is on the lighter side of a six, for example, and a green that is on the darker side of a six, and they're not going to match as well visually because even though they may match the same value number, they're on the opposite sides of that value. 
That's why it is good to have multiple swatches made of each color in the same value, so you can not only have a choice of which one matches that value, but there may also be a swatch that matches the same level of value within a different color. Make sure you're mixing enough paint for each of your swatches. For the blue swatches especially, I found that as I went through and painted them, they would dry a shade darker but also have some streaks left behind. So then I would take the extra paint and do another layer over it and that would leave it nice and smooth. It is important to make your swatches large enough in case something like this happens where it smears or doesn't paint all the way through so you have enough of the swatch that you can cut from without having to use the part that has this little smear in the corner. So let's go ahead and start checking values. Here I painted my pure color first, which is my green, straight out of the tube. And green is a relatively dark color, so I know that most of my swatches, most likely I won't be adding black, I'll probably be adding white to get most of the values that I need. Here I have some other assorted swatches. Some of these are really similar to each other. So let's go ahead and check values. I'm going to come in with my value scale, place it on top. And again, it's easier when you're standing over it. And when I squint down, I can see, let's check this middle one here. When I squint down and look at this, I can see that this one does not blend quite into here. In fact, this one's still too light. So I'll come over here to my 10 and squint down and that's blending pretty well. So I can safely say that this is my 10. Even though this is obviously not white, it still matches the 10 more than the nine. Make sure when you do your tens for your different color values that it's obviously tinted in the color family that it is in. Often we'll see students make it way too white, which is a tiny bit of green. But here you can see that it's quite green, but still matches within a 10. And we're gonna look at these two. We're gonna to try to find a swatch that not only matches a value 10, but also matches the value for the green family. So first I'm gonna come into here and check both of these values to make sure they actually match a 10. I'll come into here, put this down, squint down and yes of course it matches that value 10 right there just fine come over to here do the same thing and this one also matches a value 10. now we're coming to here i'm going to put this value down and this here it's right in between it could go for a 10 but it's looking like it's going more for the lighter side of a nine but then the moment of truth, with the come and take this, I went ahead and cut off the edge of this. This way it's easier for me to put this one on top of each other. One has a little bit of white, it's a little hard to compare. So I'll place this one here first, and I'm gonna squint down. So I've already used my value scale. I know these are both tens. I squint down to see that these two blend together. And when I squint down really hard, again, you're squinting so hard that it's basically blurring everything. I can see that yes, they do blend together. So then I'll go in with my blue that was on the darker side of a 10, but on the lighter side of a nine, and see how it compares to this one, because visually, this looks really light compared to this one here, but they blend. So let's try this here, see if that blends together too. And when I squint down really hard, this also blends. Again, it's a little easier to see in real life than on camera, but these two also blend. So in this case, because I have two that match a value 10, but I want it to match visually better with this green that I have here, I would probably go with my darker blue. Even though it's on the darker side of the 10 and lighter side of the nine, right in between that, this matches visually better with this. This is just too light compared to this. These three are all tens, but this one visually matches better than this one here. So now that we did our green swatch and then found blue swatch that matched it, let's go the other way around. I'm gonna take my blue and I'm gonna find the green that matches this swatch the best. Come into here. I'm gonna line this up, compare it to my white, and that's obviously too hard of a line when I squint down. So go down and nine is, that's blending pretty good. Let's go and check it one more time against the eight. And it does blend a little bit better in person than on the camera, but I think overall nine is a better match. So I'll push that again, if you look at it. And yep, that's blending pretty good when I squint down. So we'll say that this is definitely within the nine range. Here I have two green swatches. And in person, they're a little bit different. This one's darker than this one. And I believe they're both within the same value as this blue, but we're gonna check against the value scale first. So I'm gonna come down to here, down against the white, obviously it doesn't blend, so come down to here, I'll put it between both of these. And when I squint down, it definitely blends better in this one than this one here. So this one can be considered a nine. Come down here, try it against this value as well down and squint and yep this one blends better 
than this one, so we'll say that this one is also a nine. I would say that this one's on the lighter side of a nine, and this one's more in the mid-tone of a nine, but they are both nines. Now that, now that we've checked it against our value scale, we have to check it against our color swatch. So we come to here, my color swatch, and I'm gonna take this hedge that I've already cut off, right here, and I'm gonna push it against both of these edges here to see which one, which of these green swatches blends better into the blue. Push down right there and I'll squint, and that one blends fairly well. Bring down to this one instead now. Push down, squint down, and to me, this one blends better. So try to get it one more time. Push down there, and it blends, but there's a bit of a hard line. Squint down again, and this one definitely blends better. So I would go with this one, just because it's slightly darker, and overall visually it matches this one better anyway. And so I would use this swatch instead of this one, even though all three of them were within the same value family, this one definitely matches this one slightly better. Hopefully you're walking away from this video with a better understanding of how value works with color. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys again next time.